Now for something different. The Apollo Proton Cancer Center is working to improve access to treatment through proton beam therapy. Unlike conventional radiation therapy that uses X or gamma rays, protons are less devastating on the human body. It will also be used to treat tumors that are located near vital organs. To tell us more, let's speak to the people who are really in the know, a senior consultant for radiation oncology at the Apollo Proton Cancer Center, who's visiting our shores and finds himself in Johannesburg uh, tonight. Dr. Srinivas Chilakuri, thank you so much for your time this evening. Um, I'll leave it to you to explain to us exactly how this kind of proton therapy works, proton beam therapy. Explain to us in layman's terms how this works to fight cancer. Hi, good evening to your viewers and pleasure to be here. Uh, essentially, uh, as radiation oncologists, we work at um, you know, achieving the maximal doses to the tumor while restricting the doses to the normal tissues. And uh, we do that to a large extent with uh, X-ray based or, uh, you know, X-ray based linear accelerators, um, wherein we are able to give very high doses to the tumor while restricting the doses to normal healthy tissues. But sometimes it is not possible to do so with conventional radiation. Protons use high energy proton beams to treat cancers, unlike X-rays, which are massless and charge less. Uh, Protons are positively charged particles. Um, they carry a, a mass and a charge, and they stop. They stop uh, uh, after interacting with uh, uh, matter, and after uh, uh, you know traveling a certain distance, they stop. Because they stop, we can make them stop within the tumor, so that there is uh, no dose beyond the tumor. And and in situations where the conventional radiation is unable to uh, give adequate doses to the tumor without causing extensive damage or extensive collateral damage to the normal tissues, mm -hmm. proton therapy really benefits patients in a big way. Now, now this uh, sounds um, like this will really help our, our cancer patients, various types of cancers, because we all know so many treatments that um, uh, cancer patients, whether in our families or in our friendship circles, um, they are normally advised that they need to prepare themselves for an, a total onslaught onto their body, which makes it very difficult for the rest of the body to help fight the cancer in the body. This sounds like this uh, would be able to target a specific area, allowing the rest of the body to stay strong to continue to fight the cancer um, well after the treatment. That's absolutely right. And that is why we are able to use proton beam therapy for children, children with mm -hmm. cancers where, uh, you know, every inch of their uh, body is potentially an important critical structure. Mm -hmm. And unless we save it, uh, uh, you know, you know, we are going to see uh, late effects and uh, the, the, you know, the quality of life is going to get affected in, in these children who are likely to be cured. Um, and, and not just in children, but in, in difficult locations such as skull base, um, mm -hmm. in, in, you know, in brain tumors, in certain areas in the chest. Uh, proton therapy is especially effective uh, in controlling cancers while avoiding long-term collateral damage. Now, your center is the only, the first and only proton therapy center in South Asia and the Middle East. Uh, uh, tell us how this therapy has been received over there and what kind of results you're working with there now. So um, it is now available. Our results are available in public domain. We have been using proton beam therapy for now more than four years. We've treated more than 900 patients uh, from almost 24 different countries, including countries from South America, uh, because this is such a technology which is so resource intensive, labor intensive, cost intensive mm. uh, technology that not many countries uh, are, have adopted this technology. And therefore, I'm here to, to spread the awareness and spread our experience in using this technology for the benefit of our patients. Uh, and, and, and we have seen now a uh, um, few patients from South Africa coming to Apollo Proton Cancer Center for treatment. Um, and, and in fact, we had a, a small press release today, um, you know, where uh, the patient uh, who is actually traveled to Chennai has spoken about his experience, why and how did he arrive in Chennai? And, you know, he told us about, uh, you know, uh, that there are uh, certain patients who could 
uh, uh, could be looking out for such uh, treatments uh, uh, outside of South Africa. And currently they are traveling to countries like United States or maybe uh, maybe some European countries. And India now becomes a very cost effective option for these patients. You talk about cost being an issue here. Um, uh, is there a plan to offer this therapy in South Africa? And how are you going to go about that? How will people be able to get access to it when especially cost is such a major issue, as you've mentioned? Yeah, so, so that, is, that is a challenge we are all working together to overcome. Um, I feel that uh, uh, cost is an issue everywhere in the world. Mm. But because uh, uh, in, in countries like India, the currency is uh, uh, you know, not as strong as dollar, US dollar and, uh, and euro, the cost uh, for patients from South Africa or, or you know, African subcontinent or even in fact in most of the Asian countries becomes uh, far more accessible as far as uh, finances are concerned. Um, of course, uh, I think uh, we all uh, uh, live in resource-constrained uh, situations and we all know how to make sure that uh, the treatments can be offered in the most cost-effective way. Uh, and and, and uh, I think I, I'm here to spread the message of, you know, about uh, this new technology which is available for patients uh, of South Africa. Any plans to set up shop here in South Africa? Not yet. Um, uh, I think uh, we've had a lot of discussions with oncologists, with the South African Medical Association uh, to start a discussion, uh, to start a conversation about this technology, whether it is needed, how much is the need, what is the magnitude of the need, can we do it in the public sector, mm -hmm. is it possible through public-private partnerships. These are the discussions which we had in the last three days with uh, various stakeholders and, and we hope that uh, um, patients are going to get benefited with these discussions. One final question before I let you go. I'm always quite fascinated when I speak to specialists in fields such as yours, when this, uh, this kind of new innovation comes along that really could change lives uh, for the better. I'm always quite interested to hear how the, the, the new technology or the new way of doing things has been received both by those in the medical field as well as the patients that they um, are treating because you know as human beings change is very difficult and we don't accept new things very easily how have you gone about communicating this new technology and this new innovation both to your colleagues in um, the medical field as well as to patients yeah I, 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 I agree what you're saying is is that people are I know there is a bit of resistance uh, before people adopt new technologies uh, the rapidity at which the technology evolves is not at, you know, clearly surpasses the, uh, the rapidity at which, you know, the perception changes. Uh, there is, in, in the beginning, there is a little bit of indifference and then uh, a denial that, no, this technology is not useful or probably not useful for my patients or our patients. And then comes, okay, let's, let, we have challenges. Let's try to overcome these challenges how to work uh, how to work together and then have partial acceptance and and complete acceptance i think most medical technologies go through those phases patients uh, have a different journey i think i mean the deserving patients uh, uh, sometimes are desperate to get access to this technology uh, but it is our responsibility uh, as physicians to make sure that right patients access uh, right uh, or appropriate technology because you know, all medical technologies are not good for everyone, especially if they're expensive. And, and, you know, we need to be conscious of that fact and responsible uh, to make sure that the real uh, deserving patient, uh, you know, uh, gets the appropriate treatment. Okay, thank you so much for your time this evening. That was Senior Consultant for Radiation Oncology at the Apollo Proton Cancer Center, Dr. Srinivas Kulukuri. Uh, and you can just go online if you want to find out more about the work that they're doing um, in that space.